on the immunological memory and vaccine development so these are the specific learning objectives of this session at the end of session you should be able to define what is immunological memory how immunological memory develops naturally in the body and you also evaluate the concept of vaccine development why vaccination of the children is routinely uh, routinely given according to the national immunization schedule what is the rationale behind that so what is the immunological memory so memory it means to remember certain things so immunological memory means it is the memory associated with the immunity of the body so it is the ability to remember foreign substance which was previously encountered suppose the child's body has been exposed to the one foreign pathogen for the first time so at a time after the first time exposure their immune system becomes now activated if you seen uh, the video which i have uploaded in the last wednesday on the humoral immunity and the cell mediated immunity development that is by the b cell activation and the t cell activation and the differentiation so certain types of the some b cells once activated they will also differentiated into the memory b cell and plasma b cell and t cell also differentiated some t cell into the memory t cell and some into the different types of t helper cells cytotoxic t cells or suppressor t cells so this type of the memory cell the ones they becomes memorized or they remember that foreign particle exposure so when these uh, child uh, that child's body again becomes exposed to the same type of the foreign antigen for the second time so at a time this memory cell be already remember that we have already exposed to this type of the pathogen so at a second time they will react promptly if the pathogen is detected again for the second time that is known as the immunological memory it is governed by the memory b cell and memory t cell so how how it happens so when the b cells and t cells they are activated when they become activated following immune exposure to the foreign particles so once foreign particles become exposed to the immune immune system of the body then b cells and t cells become activated so these b cells and t cells they begin to reproduce the duplicate cells from their clone b cells and t cells and some of their offsprings will become long live memory cells along with that uh, along with the certain types of the plasma cells in case of the b clone cells and uh, helper t cells cytotoxic t cells and suppressor t cells in case of the uh, t lymphocyte differentiation so these type of the long live memory cells are produced by first exposure to the foreign particles to that of the immune system of the particular person's body actually it is the adaptive response why adaptive response because once the body become uh, our immune system becomes exposed to the particular type of the foreign particle then it becomes produce the memory cell and this memory cell becomes adapted to that type of the foreign particles to resist the infection against that type of the foreign antigen so this it is the adaptive response as memory cell provides adaptation to infection with that particular pathogen and it prepares the immunity or immune system for the future challenges with same types of the pathogen so this is the uh, main mechanism behind the immunological memory now uh, there are the mainly two types of the immunological memory one is a short term immunological memory and second is the long term immunological memory always the short term immunological memory are the passive types and long term immunological memory are the very active types what is the difference between the short term and long term memory uh, immunological memory actually it is the typing mistake uh, what is the passive short term memory and active short long term memory so passive short term memory it it is acquired by the antibody which is come from the outside of the person's body the antibody which we are introducing into the person's body that we uh, that leads to the passive short term memory 
it only last from few days up to the several months only which are the examples so the passive short term memory starts from the uh, during the pregnancy when the fetus was into the womb of their mother so first type of the passive short term memory occurs by transfer of the only one immunoglobulin that is transported across the placenta from mother's immune system to the fetal immune system or fetal blood that is the immunoglobulin g so during pregnancy immunoglobulin g is transported from the mother to the fetus across the placenta so this immunoglobulin has been entered into the fetus body by from the outside so it is a passive type of the short term memory this immunoglobulin gives protection to the fetus body against the certain type of the infections that is same like to that of the mother's body then after the delivery of the child then when he was breastfed so this breast milk from the mother also contains the antibody which is transferred to the gut of the fetus so it helps to protect the fetus against certain types of the infections or bacterial infections which can lead to the uh, infect our body cells or fetus body cells so these are the two examples of the <coughs> passive short term memory then in medicine or as a therapeutic purpose we are also giving the antibody rich serum from the one person's body to the introduced into the diseased person's body so that is also known as a passive short term memory so these are the examples of the passive short term memory then active long term memory how it occurs actually it is the natural memory produced by our immune cell so it is acquired following the infections only here you can see passive short term memory has been acquired before the infection also and after the infection also after the infection in case of the therapeutic purpose and before the infection we are giving into the uh, uh, they are the as a natural uh, procedure by during pregnancy and by the breast milk breast milk infestation so this uh, active long term memory is acquired following the infections by activation of b cell and t cell which may produce the memory b cell or t cell which we have seen in the previous slides they are uh, long lasting memory because this once the memory b cell or t cell are produced they will remain for long time into the uh, immune system uh, that is mainly into the all the lymph lymphatic system of our body into the secondary lymphoid organ of the immune system of the person's body so when there is a same type of the pathogen will encountered or will exposed to that immune system then these memory cells of the immune system will be activated and they will promptly react against that type of the foreign antigens so following first type antigen exposure what happens this t cell activated and differentiated to the different types of the t cells and some of the t cells preserved as a memory t cell they will be transferred to the whole body's lymphatic system so it will help us to give the promptly secondary immune response <coughs> then b cells also activated and differentiated to antibody secreting plasma cells and also the memory b cells so this is the active long term memory so this was about the immunological memory how immunology what is immunological memory and how it can be developed now you should know what is the concept behind the vaccine development and their uh, vaccination and to introduce the vaccine to the non disease person also like in the as a national immunization routine national immunization schedule into the Uh, once the child any child is born then vaccination should be given to that child so what is the rationale behind this type of the uh, vaccination or immunization so a host organism host organism needs time often days to mount an immune response against the new antigen suppose our body has been exposed to the one type of the particular pathogen and we cannot directly start uh, our immune system directly cannot start to degrade them or to destruct them but memory cells permits so at a first time it requires a certain days or certain weeks 
to destruct that type of the antigen because it requires to stimulate the immune system to activate the b cells and a cell to differentiate them into the memory cells also and plasma cells for antibody secretion and t cells to differentiate into the either into the alpha t cells or either into the cytotoxic t cell or either into the suppressor t cell so this all procedure requires certain time but once the memory cells has been produced by primary exposure or first time exposure to that antigen then if the next time if the same antigen is exposed to the particular that person's body then this memory cell has already been uh, has been synthesized into their first exposure then this memory cell permits in rapid response to pathogens previously encountered so that type of the pathogen becomes destructed very by a prompt response and it is a very strong response and very rapid response in active immunity can be generated artificially through the vaccination we have seen in the previous slide that the passive immunity is been generated by either into the in medicinal purpose by antibody rich serum but active immunity that is the long term immunity can also be generated artificially that the procedure through the vaccination or immunization so this is the most important thing uh, so what is the concept or rational behind the vaccination or immunization so in principle of the vaccination so what we do in the vaccination we introduce an antigen from a pathogen in order to stimulate our immune system our immune system has not been exposed to that type of the antigen previously but we are giving that type of the antigen from the particular pathogen to our the body cells and we stimulate the our immune system against that type of the pathogen by giving that type of the antigen so that is the artificial infection also we are giving the artificially providing this type of the pathogen into the body cell so what happen so there is a development of specific immunity against that particular pathogen so this immune system becomes stimulated and stimulate the b cell and t cell and they will differentiate between the memory cells and along with the other types of the cells like plasma cells or b t helper cells etc <coughs> so etc type of the different say, t cells and b cells are synthesized along with the memory t cells and b cell <coughs> so and this does not cause disease associated with that type of the organism so this is the main important thing or rational behind their type of the vaccination or immunization so this is the principle behind the vaccination we are introducing the antigen from the pathogen in order to stimulate the immune system and so there is a development of specific immunity against that particular pathogen but without causing the disease associated with that type of the particular organism now what you uh, how this vaccination will helpful so these vaccines they are actually powerful means to prevent and eradicate the disorder any certain types of the disease we will see certain examples after the uh, at the last which type of the disease has been uh, eradicated by this vaccination procedure and some of the disorders has been uh, decreased their severity or it has been prevented by this vaccination <coughs> now this discovery and utilization of the vaccines it represents an significant milestone in the modern medical history some pioneer work or starting of this vaccination or vaccine concept vaccination concepts has has been given by i um, you might has been know this name of this scientist it is the edward jenner and the louis pasteur in uh, 18th and 19th century they have work on the, as a pioneering work on the vaccination <coughs> they both find out that or revealed that inoculation with the inactive forms of the pathogen means we are isolating the uh, from the pathogens particular pathogen we are isolating the certain inactive forms of that pathogen then we are introducing into the inoculation means we are introducing into the other body or human body cells or any types of the other living organism body cells so it will protect against subsequent infections with the same types of the active organ organism in the future
सो दीज इज द थिंग दे हेव बीन फाउंड आउट बाय एडवर्ड जेनर एंड लुइस पास्टर नाउ द कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ द वैक्सीन हाउ दे आर आइसोलेटेड फ्रॉम द पर्टिकुलर पैथोजन सो एक्टिव कंपोनेंट ऑफ द वैक्सीन दैट इज रिस्पोन्सिबल टू प्रोटेक्ट अगेंस्ट द पर्टिकुलर वायरल और बैक्टीरियल ऑर्गेनिजम और इन्फेक्शन दे कंजिस्ट ऑफ डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स सो देर आर द डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स टू टेक द पर्टिकुलर वायरल पैथोजन एंड दे हेज बीन ट्रीटेड बाय डिफरेंट प्रोसीजर एंड दे आर वी आर प्रिपेरिंग द वैक्सीन when you learn about these vaccination different types of the vaccine in uh, preventive and social medicine you will find out there are the different types of the vaccines like killed vaccine live vaccines subunit vaccines toxoid vaccines so that different types of the vaccines can be prepared from the same type of the pathogen so i you just taken a how they has been isolated or what is the what procedure we are doing in particular form of that vaccine so <clears throat> these are the forms of the pathogen in vaccination so different forms of the vaccine pathogens so in killed vaccine or inactivated vaccine we are isolating the pathogen how so harmless pathogen pathogen has been uh, treated by chemical and high heat procedure so that it will be converted to the harmless pathogen so it is also known as killed vaccine in live vaccine or live attenuated vaccine or weakened vaccine this live pathogen they have accumulated <coughs> live pathogen has been treated out so it will be produce mutations we are producing mutations into the live pathogen so this live pathogen they does not produce the infection to the human cell same like things we have seen into the gene therapy how we are transferring our interested uh, normal gene into the our vector cells so in in vector cells or vector cells containing the virulent gene that uh, gag genes pro genes into the one particular example we have seen that we are deleting them or we are inactivating the that type of the particular gene same like the concepts also we are taking here that in production of the live attenuated vaccine <coughs> then sub unit vaccine as the name says the sub unit we are only taking the one <coughs> particular protein or virulent uh, uh, virulent dna or virulent gene causing the uh, infection to the our body cells so we are only taking the purified protein from that virulent gene only and this protein component we are giving to the uh, as a we are the purified protein as a component from the pathogen we are isolating and we are making a vaccine that is known as subunit vaccine <coughs> then toxoid vaccine so in same like that the protein uh, subunit vaccine certain toxins which are produced by the certain bacteria like clostridium tetani and corineum bacterium diphtheria we are taking the that particular toxoid or toxins we are purifying from that bacteria then these toxins are inactivated by treatment with the chemicals or the heat so they are renders inactive so now this vaccine also known as toxoid vaccine we are introducing into the person body please log in and delete recordings or purchase more storage from your account so that is the concept of toxoid vaccine preparation <clears throat> so this immunization or it is also called the treatment of a person with the vaccine it leads to the development of immunological memory that we have seen that there is a immunological immunization immunization immune cells becomes activated and produce the memory b cell or t cell so what is uh, that is the ability of the immune system to respond more rapidly and effectively to the pathogens that have been encountered previously so what type of the mechanism occurs after vaccination you can see here there is a vaccination of the child is given so when a vaccine is in injected into the person's body it generally does not cause the any infection or illness but 
slowly or and effectively it teaches the immune system these uh, components of the vaccine that is the one particular component of the pathogen that effectively teaches the immune system what the viral particles look like so these viral particles we are giving like in the killed vaccine or live vaccine or toxoid vaccine or sub unit vaccine we are teaching the immune system that these viral particle looks like this so be prepared and produce the memory b cells and t cells so actually when our body cells be exposed to that type of the viral pathogen you remember that we have already exposed this type of the viral particles previously or in past so <clears throat> this stimulates the production of the memory cells so in subsequent infection these cells can bind to the virus and trigger a rapid immune response so it will helps to prevent the certain many infections so this is the mechanism after vaccination so some examples i want to show you that uh, one disorder you might have no no that that is the smallpox infection <clears throat> so by vaccination of the smallpox smallpox was first it was found in 1966 around 220 million cases of smallpox has been reported throughout the world and after that vaccination against the smallpox has been developed and all the com, uh, per, uh, human beings has been given the vaccination against that smallpox so in just 14 years smallpox has been eradicated eradicate eradication means there is a complete removal of the any type of the virus through from the world that is um, if i if i am not wrong that is around if we are not founding any case of the small here as a example is a smallpox case in continuously for the 3 years then we uh, our health system or there is a world who they are designating or they are announcing that the particular viral pathogen has been eradicated from the world then the another example uh, that is a vaccination against human papilloma virus and vaccination against the hepatitis b virus so this human papilloma virus they leads to the production of the cervical cancer in the females and hepatitis b virus they leads to the production of uh, infection in of the liver and leads to the hepatocellular carcinoma but in uh, immunization or vaccination against this hpv virus and hbv virus they have been shown that effectively decrease the cancer incidence uh, associated with this virus like cervical cancer and hepatocellular carcinoma so this was all about our the immunological memory and uh, concepts behind the vaccine development so in a nutshell vaccination or immunization of the child is very important to develop the immunological memory against the some common viral pathogens so this helps to decrease the incidence of the infection by these pathogens in future or <coughs> in future so this was completes our class anyone has a question you can ask me